Okay, so bringing us home today is Money Me. Money Me has an ASX code of double, double M, so MME. The company has a market cap of approximately 54 million. Money Me is a consumer lender offering online personal loans, car loans, and credit cards. Founded in 2013 and listed in 2019, Money Me's loan book has grown to over a billion now, and the company posted recently posted a 12 million in statutory MPAT in FY23 and another 6 million in the first half of 24. Last year, the company also became a B Corp certified, demonstrating its strong ESG performance. Presenting today is Money Me's founder and CEO, Clayton Howes. Clayton, welcome and take it away. Thank you for the opportunity. I am honored to present Money Me here today. And let's begin on the first page. It's our fast paced technology that we're operating within. This technology led finance industry where competition is strong and the landscape is ever changing. Our creativity and innovation has set us apart. We architect our future by transferring visionary ideas into groundbreaking realities. We service hundreds of thousands of MoneyMe customers. Our target customers also have above average, Equ have an above average Equifax profile. When you think about us as a lending business, we are powered by technology that I'll take you through. But we also have this interesting aspect that is creating multiple products that servicing customers along a longer lead time of their credit profiles in their lifetime journey. We started with a smaller personal loan, expanded to a credit card, and now we're servicing cars and we're also servicing, uh, that is car loans, and we're servicing customers who want upgrades into their in their home environments. So we're reaching a massive broad spectrum of customers that over this journey that we've created. Now, if I move to the next slide, please. Our journey has been marked by remarkable achievements throughout this 11 years of me leading this business. That's from pioneering cutting edge technologies, our systems running seamlessly and securely, our distribution expanding, our wholesale funding structures, creating a step change in cost and scale advantages, and our organic growth has been nothing short of spectacular. After listing the business in, in December 2019 to, to date, we've grown our loan book that I'll show quite dramatically from about a, an $87 million loan book to over $1 billion. And this characteristic of our loan book is quite spectacular in its own right that I'll take you through. On our next page, I'll talk you through our technology, and that's Horizon. It's creating the best in market products that's, driving, that's the driving force behind our competitive advantage. The reason we're able to innovate and stay ahead in the industry, it's this 500,000 developers hours that we've put into it. Uh, we can answer calls, 75% uh, of our calls in under 10 seconds. Our operations are 24 seven. A consumer might walk into a dealership environment that would typically take them about seven days in industry standards to have access to finance to drive the vehicle away. We can do that in an hour and that can be a Saturday and a Sunday and any other day of the week where a customer has choice and choice competitively priced, appropriately structured for them to understand all the things that we, we herald ourselves upon, which is transparency and ethical standards in our industry. And we give the customer control to manage their finance and they're able to drive that vehicle out of a dealer showroom in under an hour, which is quite remarkable. And that's powered by our microservices technology-based platform called Horizon. Now on the next page, please. But beyond this technology brilliance, where innovation thrives, our technology powers this really strong credit decisioning process engine. We architected this engine where the first million dollars that I had originated, um, this first customer that I had uh, uh, managed to have the opportunity to engage with, myself sitting on the phone calls, writing the credit policy appropriately, was a Commonwealth Bank employee. And I asked this person, why would they have chosen money me at our early stage of, 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 of building out our platform? This Commonwealth Bank employee said, the bank asks me information and asks me for pay slips. Uh, and I've got to go and do this printing and scanning. And it's just foreign to me. And this was a 23 year old. With money me, it's all digital. At my fingertips on your mobile app, I'm able to provide all the information I need and you're able to service my needs really, really quickly. And that customer went from one 
to over 700,000 Australian customers, moving from one personal loan to credit cards and, like I said, car finance. And this is all powered by this technology-led innovation. We, of course, have embedded artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence not only allows us to decision more correctly and more correctly for leading information, and that's leading information in our world is really important, and that is financial habits that we see from people's bank transactional information is what we can predict is how their future expenses are going to be managed. And in particularly in a, in a world that is highly digitalized, we use facial recognition technology to make sure that we are communicating to the right person. We use fraud detection processes in artificial intelligence. So the application is pretty wide and vast, which we, which we're very proud of creating. Um, if I can move on to the next part. Now, it's not only just that we've got this amazing technology, uh, clever distribution capability through our, our innovation, uh, our expanded distribution, our price competitiveness, uh, that's driving all of these things that are leading to a significant advantage of having customers promoting us with a net promoter score of plus 68. You know, when we think about the banks, some cases they're negative and they average around that, um, as you can see there, about a plus 8.4 promoter score. Our Google Star reviews are 4.6 out of 5. And we're servicing over hundreds of thousands of Australian customers. Now, in our sector, for customers to actually highly promote a lending business, uh, highly promote a technology business uh, with a lot of advocacy is not an easy achievement. But over the course of time, we've built this difference. And part of our B Corp certification is around protecting our authenticity by having transparency, by having our approach to customers that is best in class. And this is driving our, our, our outcomes that we're very proud to, to demonstrate here. Even in the high interest rate environment, we have a strong statutory positive environment. We also have this loan book. This loan book was in the first, in, in the first half of 23, $1.2 billion, and it's roughly about the same. But the transition that we went through was to create this high Equifax profile borrower, was to create a larger secured asset base as opposed to just largely or fully unsecured. And it's remarkably seen us build, as you can see over the, in, on this chart, a 751 average Equifax profile, which is way above the Australian average. Uh, we've got net losses that have reduced quite significantly. We've got a strong origination profile that's now continuing to grow because we can see that the market environments with the rising interest rate uh, challenges, we, we, we can see that they're, they're on they're on the right balance now and we can expect some you know can we can expect some tailwinds when we see the cash rate coming down the secured assets in our book when we launched autopay uh in 2021 we had a zero start of course and organically we've grown this to now more than 50% of our loan book in such a short period of time and that's testament to our innovation our distribution and our ability to acquire customers in a competitive environment uh, if you can move to the next page, please. Thank you. When you think about money me stages of growth, we went from a steady, uh, you know, a steady growth phase in our in our formation. After lending that first million dollars, we expanded to family office funding, moved to wholesale funding, and now we have this large bank institutional grade funding structures that gives us a real strong scale and price advantage. But if you think about the trajectory of this money of our business from financial year 19 to 20, we had a loan book that was maturing from 87 million to $134 million. We actually were profitable from the early stage of this business. And that's largely because of our technology enabling us to service a really efficient model from the start point to the end point of a customer's lifetime journey with within their credit product. It's all technology driven that's enabled us to have a low cost operating model. That's an advantage of you know, the banks and the non-banks that have got, you know, slow and, and people laden businesses. So take this trajectory from a steady growth business from 87 million to $134 million loan book. Then we moved into this high growth environment because we had the structures and capability to do that. Moving to 30, 333 million to plus a billion dollars. And then the macro environment through some challenges that we wanted to address, but not continuing this growth, but to have this consolidation of, uh, of, of our loan book, focus on three key products that the banks were not focusing on, three key products that personal loans, credit cards, and car finance, and enabling us to shift up the average credit profile, 
uh, price credit appropriately for us to get some real economic advantages. And now we're back into that growth stage. We can see the cash rate challenges, you know, dissipating. That's, you know, uh, uh, you know, we can see we can see that macro environment being stable. We can see consumers' jobs and their and the ability to service uh, the loans that we offer to them really strongly. So then we're going to continue the trajectory of increasing our secured asset lending profile, and that's through our, our car finance product, AutoPay. The operating leverage is really strong in this business, and that's very attractive. So the operating costs, they, they don't change much according to you know, growth and scale because we are a technology-led business. So every new origination now that we put onto the platform has a strong economic advantage for us than, than, than the past. We reinvest for growth consistently because we can see a significant upside and value proposition that we're unfolding here. We can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. The challenging macro environment is obvious to us. You know, uh, rising interest rates, what we have is a, a variable rate interest product like mortgages with banks. Uh, we can move with the cash rate so we can protect margins. Uh, we've seen that there's been cost of living pressures. Our scale advantage is uh, affording us the ability to price our products really efficiently and, and achieve that higher average Equifax profile consumer that's giving us strong returns. Car industry has seen some structural shifts with Macquarie Bank and Westpac pulling out because they need to focus on mortgages and other technologies to do that. And it's given us a massive opportunity with a, a sector that uh, is a really strong economic advantage for our business, and that's our auto pay product. And the AI opportunities and cyber risk focuses that we've had by owning our own technology, we've been able to bolster up our security, lead with innovation. It's not costing us a lot because we've already invested into the platform. And then very quickly onto the last slide, please. Uh, when we think about this money me opportunity, there's three key areas I want you to, 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 to think about, and that's this customer value proposition, you know, where innovation is strong and you have your own technology, you can build a really strong, strong, formidable platform here in Australia. And that's what we're doing with our three core products. Uh, we've got this massive scale opportunity. Whilst auto pay for car finance represents already 51% of our loan book over a short period of time, it only represents about one less than 1% of the actual uh, market share. So there's an ample opportunity for us to grow there. The strong return profile is really obvious for our business with a $1.2 billion book, making profits, and able to organically grow, there's still really strong NIM advantages for us. And our NIM is about circa 10%. And that's a combination of unsecured and secured assets, which creates a strong operating environment for us to continue in. Now, I'm going to stop there because there's a lot to talk about in this business, but maybe Manny, if we can move then to, uh, to Q&A. Yeah, Clayton, thank you. Um, okay, uh, let's start off now. You, 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 you talk a lot about innovation in the presentation. Can you give us an idea of specifically at the moment where you see um, innovation uh, sort of pro progressing for, for your business? Like what are the key areas where you are looking to innovate that may give you those sort of extra returns? Yeah, this is a significant advantage for us is the decisioning engine for credit. As we move out of a cashless society into pure digital, we're able to see so much more and richer information that gives us confidence in the predictability of how a consumer is going to spend credit, gives us the optimization of what's the right credit product for this person. And we're able to do it better than everyone else because we've got the, the digital capabilities to understand data, large amounts of data using artificial intelligence algorithms that we've built over the many, many years. So we can predict information very quickly, and then we can provide the customer that service and opportunity to, to get that access to that finance really, really efficiently. Like that innovation I described, AutoPay, where a customer walks in, and instead of relaying information to a human across a desk about my telephone bills, my kids' school fees, and all that stuff we don't feel comfortable doing anymore to a person, at my fingertips, I can set up my car finance and drive that car away in under 60 minutes. Very soon, which we've got in pilot, is a consumer can walk around in the dealership environment, hover over with their mobile phone across either QR codes or number plates and have an assessment real time made where they can say, we will inform the customer what their repayments and interest costs are gonna be on that car. Now that is transforming what is otherwise an eight day human intervention, you know, broken model that exists. So that's the type of innovation that we're talking about, Manny. 
Okay, understood. To what extent is AI part of this innovation? How important is AI to that innovation? Oh, it would be it would be remiss of me not to you know talk about AI here. We were we are a digital led business, and for us, everything is about uh, everything is just data. And AI has so many applications in our business that I've already covered, like the art, the de decisioning processes by understanding data more. Uh, you know it, what it does is it takes a whole lot, raft of data, it it compares to a whole bunch of other data, and we've originated over three billion dollars successfully to date and so we've got rich information that helps predict you know commonality of what what might happen next but the stuff that we're working on right now that i'm pretty excited about that we all know is transforming language into real-time access and of information so a consumer that a customer that's engaging with us uh, a robot is now responding back really efficiently it's writing responses that's you know it, it's got some controls and it's got some commonality as opposed to relying on humans to that can make mistakes and can take time we're responding back to customers really efficiently with more accurate information we can predict that very very easily and we can understand and watch uh, our our technology servicing customers faster more accurately and that's powered by ai soon of course you know like everyone else will be leading into conversational style replacement of, of of human interaction but right now it's written is our is our favorite form which is which is working well okay and uh, there is a question that's come through just asking again touching on innovation in a sense but it's sort of saying you know you've touched on your technological innovation and on bringing out a new car loan product what do you see as your main strategy for growing market share going forward is it a really or is the car loan product the key driver here or are there other parts of the business that you're looking, um, you know, in terms of growing that market share? It's an interesting one. I think what's happening here to us, which has been part of our strategy from day dot, is you build this big book, you get the scale and operating cost environment opportunities, right? That's where we are now. When I look at the next half a billion dollars of growth in our loan book, it's a significantly attractive return profile. And that significant attractive return profile comes with two things. One is the ability to access cheap debt capital. The international markets have got really strong debt capital markets that are funding our large wholesale programs now, and that's cheap money. And what they like is the balanced approach of unsecured and secured. So we get the economic benefits by having now access to international debt capital. So our loan book is funded by cheaper money. And the balance of that auto pay product, car finance product and unsecured gives us some real economic advantages. So we like both. So when you think about us and our ability to leverage technology, leverage market opportunities, you'll see auto pay continuing to thrive and grow. And you'll see the unsecured uh, uh, capability of ours by distributing personal loans and credit cards also continuing. Because remember, what we like is not a single product focus. Like what a bank's done is offer the customer diversification in the product set that they're looking for. Personal loan for home renovation or, or solar systems, cars, you know, and second cars in their in their homes, a credit card for the everyday use. For us, those three products are the core. And guess what? Somehow the structural shift has finally started happening. The regulator has imposed upon the banks regulatory capital uh, challenges. And that is banks have to hold regulatory capital against these personal loan and car books. So all of a sudden the banks now are focusing more on mortgages, not just because it's what they want to do, but is actually the regulatory capital requirements are so significantly lower on mortgages that that makes natural sense for them. So it's giving us a massive opportunity. And as I said, these tailwind advantage are both structural and scale advantage led. Okay, understood. And just to, uh, to final question, just to wrap it up, um, loan book quality so you've you, you touched on this during the presentation obviously there's been a push um from uh, from the business to to improve that quality um and the question is you know how does a trajectory for that quality look going forward are you going to continue to try to uh, improve that loan quality are you happy where it's at now and how will some of these new products impact that we we went through a transformation because we started with this younger profile demographic. And when we saw COVID, we, whilst it might not have panned out that way, we were worried about, you know, casuals or young people losing jobs that weren't in, you know, uh, in, in mainstream environments and mainstream uh, occupations. So we decided to diversify and go up that credit profile, 
right? And we added cars, which has got a ton of security in it. You know, secondhand cars we love because, you know, the, the, the equity in those cars are actually quite, they're quite remarkable and have stood the test of time for ages. So when we look at the balance of, of, our, of our loan book, it's got a lot of diversification. So no single employment sector risk. Uh, no, you know, there's, there's now very little, if any, you know, casual and, and student market representation that's naturally shifted our Equifax profile to it's got homeowner advantages and strong Equifax profile and, and car as, as collateral. So we're exactly where we want to be now. And we've got a NIM advantage of about 10% uh, is, is a strong NIM in our sector. You know, the non-bank mortgage lenders, you know, they're struggling to get 2% NIM. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a challenged environment out there for them. And we're sitting at 10% and we've got security in our assets and a strong Equifax profile. So we don't have to do anything anymore other than grow the existing, grow the from the base that we've got now with the existing settings. So I'm pretty excited about that. Fantastic. All right, Clayton. Thank you for that. It's fascinating business. Uh, it looks like it's going very, very well. Uh, congratulations. All right. Well, um, uh, have, uh, thank you again for presenting and have a wonderful weekend.